Welcome to uh, the Blackboard discussion on demand and supply and markets, and this is Demand 2. This is where we left off. We had this schedule of prices and demand, and what we're going to do now is we're going to shift that and change it from a schedule of numbers and put it as a graph. Very simple now. Let's talk about what's going to happen on these hot dogs. You'll see here I've got price per hot dog here. And over here, I have a quantity of hot dogs demanded per day. You have to have a unit of time down here to make this thing accurate. Let's change our color to something a little bit different. Okay. Let's think about this. This first hot dog gives us lots of benefit. We're willing to spend $5 on it, so we can put a point right up here like that. What about this second hot dog? Well, we've eaten our first hot dog. It's given us a lot of utility and everything. The second hot dog, not so much utility. We're not even willing to spend $5. But if you want me to buy a second hot dog, you're going to have to lower the price $4. So we put a dot here. Second hot dog or two hot dogs. If you want me to buy two hot dogs, the price better be $4. Of course, if you were good, you could charge me $5 for the first hot dog and then $4 for the second hot dog. But if you didn't know that, you could just say, oh, the hot dogs are $4 and I'll buy two. How about the third hot dog? Mm, you know, I've had a little pickle relish. I'm not so hungry about hot dogs. But if you drop the price to $3, I'll buy a third hot dog. So we put a dot there. The fourth hot dog, $2. The fifth hot dog, I'm really starting to get a bit queasy. But it's a good baseball game, so I'm willing to buy five hot dogs that day. Here are the dots that represent that graph of numbers. You simply connect the dots, and you get a line. That line which is a very straight curve, is called the demand curve, and you denote it by putting a big D there. Sometimes you just put a Q and a P and a demand curve like this. When we work with demand and supply, we'll probably do that. But let's think about this line now. What is this line? Yes, indeed, it's a demand line, and we're going to do fun stuff with it and shift it and everything like that. But there's something before you move on to that you've got to understand in order to really get what markets are about in economics. And that is underneath this demand curve here, is representing the value this person is placing on this hot dog. He's saying, look, I'm willing to spend $5. It's a kind of representation of utility or benefit underneath there. That's very important. You've got a kind of picture of benefit underneath this demand curve. Look at this. Here's the second hot dog. So now we've got another picture of benefit for this hot dog. Here's another one, the third. So underneath here is giving us a picture. This demand curve isn't just selling, oh, lower price, more demanded, etc. It's also telling us something about marginal utility, isn't it? As marginal utility goes down because I've eaten a lot more hot dogs, you better lower the price to get me to buy all these hot dogs. It's really that simple. 